Lorax by Dr. Seuss. On the far end of town where the griggle grass grows, the wind smells slow and sour when it blows. No birds ever seen excepting old crows. It is the street of the lifted borax. And deep in the griggle grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you can still see today where the Lorax once stood just as long as it could before somebody lifted the Lorax away. What was the Lorax, and why was it there, and why was it lifted and taken somewhere from the far end of town where the griggle grass grows? Well, Wunster still lives there. Ask him. He knows. You won't see the Wunster. Don't, don't knock at his door. He lurks and is lurking at the top of the store. He lurks and is lurking cold under the roof, but makes his own clothes out of Miff Mufford Moof. On a special dank midnights in August, he peeks out of the shutters, and sometimes he speaks and tells how the Lorax was lifted away. He'll tell you, perhaps, if you're willing to pay. On the end of a rope, he lets down a tin pail, and you'll have to toss in 15 cents in the nail in the shell of a great, 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 great grandfather's nail. Then he pulls up the pail and makes the most careful count to see if you paid him a proper amount. Then he hides what you've paid him away in his snub, his secret strange hole in his grooveless glove. Then he grunts, I'll call you a whisper from my phone, for the secrets I tell are for your ears alone. Sloop? Down sloops to whisper my phone to your ear. And the old ones are whispers are not very clear since they have to come down through a snuggly hose. And he sounds as if he had smallish bees up his nose. Now I'll tell you, he says with his teeth sounding gray, how the Lorax got lifted and taken away. It all started way back. Such a long time back. Way back in the days when the grass was still green and the pond was still wet and the clouds were still clean. Oh, and the swan song of the swimming swans rang out in space. One morning I came to this glorious place and I first saw the trees, the truffle trees. The bright colored tufts of the truffle trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. And none of the trees I saw brown barbaloots. They were frisking about in the barbaloot suits and they played in the shade and ate truffle fruits. And, and from the ripples pond came this comfortable sound of the hummingfish humming, a little splashing around. <sighs> but those trees, those trees, those truffle trees, all my life I've been searching for trees such as these. The touch of their tufts was much softer than silk. And they had the sweet smell of fresh butterfly milk. I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart. I knew just what I'd do. I unloaded my cart. In no time at all, I knew I built a small shop, and then I chopped down a truffle tree with one chop. With great skillful skill, great speedy speed, I took the soft tuft and I knitted a thing. The instant I finished, I heard a gazump. I looked. I saw something pop out of the stump of the tree I chopped down. It was sort of a man. Describe him? It's hard. I don't know if I can. He, he, he was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy. He spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. Mister, he said with a sawdusty sneeze, I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. And I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset as he shouted and he puffed. What's that thing you've made out of my truffle tuft? Look, Lorax, I said, there, there's no calls for alarm. I chopped down one tree. I'm doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. This thing's a thing. A thing's a fine something that all people need. It's a shirt. It's a sock. It's a glove. Oh, it's a hat. But it has other uses. Yeah, far beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers for bicycle seats. The Lorax said, 
Sir, you are crazy with greed. There is no one on earth that's going to buy that fool's need. But the very next minute, I proved he was wrong. For just that minute, a chap came along. He thought the need I knitted was great. He happily bought it for three ninety eight. I laughed at the Lorax. Hey, poor stupid guy. You can never tell what some people will buy. I repeat, cried the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I'm busy, I told him. Shut up, if you please. I rushed across the room and, room and no time at all built a radio phone. I put in a quick call. I called all my brothers, and uncles, and aunts, and I said, listen, here. here's a wonderful chance for the whole Wunster family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast. Take the road to North Niche. Turn left at Weehawken and make a sharp right at South Stitch. And in no time at all in the factory, I built the whole Wunster family was working full tilt. We were all knitting sneeze just as busy as bees, the shell, chopping, truffling, trees. Then... Oh, baby, oh, how my business has grown. Now, chopping one tree at a time, that's too slow. So I quickly invented my super axe hacker, which whacked off four truffle trees at one smacker. We were making thneeds four times as fast as before, and that Lorax <laughs> didn't show up anymore. But the next week, he knocked on my new office door, and he snapped, I am the Lorax who speaks for the trees, which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. But I'm also in charge of the brown barbalutes, who played in the shade in the barbalute suits, and lived happily eating truffler fruits. Now, thanks to your hacking my trees to the ground, there's not enough truffler fruit to go around. And my poor barbalutes are all getting the crummies, because they have gas and no food in their tummies. They love living here, but I can't let them stay. They'll have to find food, and I hope that they may. Good luck, boys, he cried, and he sent them away. I, the old once -er, felt sad as I watched them all go. But business is business, and business may grow, regardless of crummies and tummies, you know. I meant no harm. I most truly did not. But I had to grow bigger, so bigger I got. I biggered my factory, I biggered my roads, I biggered my wagons, I biggered the loads of the things I shipped out. I was shipping them for to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went right on biggering, selling more needs, and I biggered my money, which everyone needs. Then again, he came back. Fixing some pipes when that old nuisance Lorax came back with more gripes. I am the Lorax, he caught and he whiffed and he sneezed and he snuffled. He snarled, he sniffed. Wunsler, he cried with his cruelest croak. Wunsler, you're making such smogulous smoke. My, my poor swami swans, well, he can't sing a note. No one can sing who has smog in his throat. And so, said the Lorax. Please pardon my cough. They cannot live here, so I'm sending them off. Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. They may have to fly for a month or a year to escape from the smog you smogged up around here. What's more, snapped a Lorax. His dander was up. Let me say a few words about Gluppity Glup. Your machine chugs on day and night without stop, making Gluppity Glup. Also, Schloppity Schlop. And what do you do with this leftover goo? I'll show you, you dirty old monster man, you. You're glumping the pond where the hummingfish hum. No more can they hum, for their gills are all gummed. <sighs> so I'm sending them off. Oh, their future's dreary. They'll walk on their fins and get woefully weary in search of some water that isn't so smeary. And then I got mad. I, I got terribly mad. I yelled at the Lorax. Now listen here, Dad. All you do is yap, yap, and say bad, 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 bad. Well, I've got my rights, sir, and I'm telling you, I intend to go on doing just what I do. And for your information, you Lorax, I'm figuring on biggering and biggering 
and biggering and biggering, turning more truffle trees into thneeds, which everyone, everyone, everyone needs. And at that very moment, we heard a loud whack. From outside in the fields came a sickening smack of an axle tree. We heard the tree fall. It was the very last truffle, tree of them all. No more trees. No more thneeds. No more work to be done. So in no time, my uncles, aunts, and everyone all waved me goodbye. They jumped into my cars and drove away under the smoke smuggered stars. Now all is left neath this bad smelling sky was my big empty factory. The Lorax and I. The Lorax said nothing, just gave me a glance. Just gave me a sad, sad backward glance. As he lifted himself by the seat of his pants. And I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he heisted himself and took leave of this place through a hole in the smog without leaving a trace. And all that the Lorax left here in this mess was a small pile of rocks with one word, unless. Well, whatever that meant, I just couldn't guess. That was long, long ago. But each day since that day, I've sat here and worried and worried away. Through the years, my buildings have fallen apart. I've worried about it with all of my heart. But now, says the one sir, now that you're here, the word of the Lorax seems perfectly clear. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. So Catch calls the one sir. He lets something fall. It's a truffle of seed. It's the last one of all. You're in charge of the last of truffle seeds. And truffle trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffle, treat it with care. Give it clean water and feed it fresh air. Grow a forest, protect it from axes that hack. Then the Lorax and all of his friends may come back. The end.